All right. Well, we're back again for another session here of seventh grade design project. And so we're going to briefly review what we've been doing. We've got about 25% of the project done. It took us a couple days to get there, uh, so it may take us a few more days to finish up as well. Uh, I'm predicting that as the time goes by that we will be able to uh, produce the artwork a little bit faster each day. Uh, familiarity with the project helps a great deal and also the fact that the muscles in your hands and uh, your attention spans also are getting a little bit longer each day and you know you can see the progress. Once you start seeing the progress a lot of times on a piece of artwork then you get committed more to the idea that uh, you need to see it through to the finish. So we're about one-fourth of the way done with the project based on this alphabet that we made this worksheet out of that we are referencing as our um, as our alphabet. So everybody's alphabet should look different. So it's really important that you hang on to this or you might uh, be lost without it. Alright, so we're spelling out the message. Uh, an ounce of prevention is greater than a pound of cure. And we have a series of colors that we use for this as well. So each day we'll say uh, we'll show that. So uh, these ten colors with the patches next to them, these two are both gray right here, by the way, uh, are the colors that I'd like for you to stick to while uh, creating the uh, alphabet, which we did in a previous video, and then coloring that in to suit your taste, as long as you have bright and dark colors all in each of the uh, various uh, uh, letters on the symbols that represent your letters. So when we left off yesterday, we had just completed the letter F, and so we're going to drive on with our work here today, and we're going to continue on, really just start in the second row, I believe, is probably an appropriate place to start at right now. And so I'm going to set my alphabet aside for a moment. Look at the letter P. Well, I can find the letter P on here somewhere, and it appears to be a tan outline or a tan stripe around the outside edge with uh, what appears to be yellow green in the middle of it. Okay, so I'll get out my tan and my yellow green and uh, they both could use some sharpening so you know I'm going to get a good working point on there uh, that allows me to get a lot of mileage out of my pencil without snapping the point of it off which is really uh, just slows you down so much and it also wastes the pencils and so when you have to buy your own colored pencils a lot of times that really solves the whole uh, wasting of the materials uh, situation. If you have really good colored pencils also like uh, Prismacolor pencils those are pretty expensive. Alright, tan on the outside, yellow green in the middle. We'll just set that right there for the moment. I'm going to get out my slip sheet so that I don't um, smudge up my artwork so I put it under my hand as I color there and I've got to get out the old oops, bumping the table. Get out the old uh, eraser and get rid of the letter P in this case. Maybe that dot in the middle that we were using for reference earlier uh, on some of our other letters. Clean it up a bit. Sometimes the lighter colors like the tan, the uh, pencil it will show through that. Uh, but a lot of times uh, darker colors is not always that critical. There seems to be a bit of a mark up in this corner that I really dislike. And so I'm going to scrub that straight down that line and then dust it again. I think that looks much better already. Now I've changed some of the settings on the camera and uh, I think we may be getting a little bit brighter uh, image on the uh, on our recording of this. Okay, let's get going here. <coughs> so I guess I'll start at the top with the tan and try not to make a pattern on it and roll your pencil around in your hands all the time when you're uh, coloring with these things and change the direction of the strike of the line you know so that the <clears throat> you get a much smoother finish that way and believe it or not it seems to make the uh, the pencil last longer too because you're constantly rolling it uh, you're really uh, strangely I think you're covering up a lot more territory when you do uh, this technique. Now it's kind of unnatural for a lot of people who just want to see it develop from one side to the other or from one line between the lines. 
but I think once you figure it out, uh, it works really, really well. And it goes against my, it's counterintuitive for me as well, because I really like to just get right up next to the line and color horizontally or vertically. But what happens is that leaves little overlapping uh, marks in your coloring, and uh, that's not a bad thing if that's what you're trying to achieve. Uh, but in this particular project, we're trying to achieve uh, some, you know, interact good working habits, first of all, and that would be to develop habits that will become just, you know, natural after repetition, and that would be things like rolling the pencil in your fingertips as you, as you color, or even draw. Uh, it keeps a, a kind of a pointy corner on it at all times. It allows you to do detailed work right up against the lines. And then also kind of scribbling in, you know, random directions. Uh, a lot of people don't really appreciate scribbling, but there's a lot of value to it if it's done with some level of control. Uh, that's the difference between very young children and people who know that what they're scribbling has got control behind it and thinking. Uh, little children are just expressing themselves and making uh, marks, graphic marks, uh, but they don't have any thinking really going behind it. But it would be interesting to know what they are thinking as they're doing that. It's a good child psychology <laughs> theme. I wonder what children are thinking about while they're scribbling. If they're pre-speech, you know, they can't talk yet. Huh. Well, anyway, so we're kind of scribbling and trying to get that effect of uh, having a... Uh, overlapping strike marks to go away and then when we go back and we address the uh, the opacity issues you know we're trying to find all those little scraps of white that are showing through there and uh, that's looking pretty good so you know you kind of dress it up as you go along periodically and that way you're pretty much done with the square when it's when you finish a, a, a letter you're done with it instead of having to go back again and revisit the same thing over and over again. And I think that for most people, that is just a pain in the neck. Uh, especially, it, it leaves you less than enthusiastic about the project you're working on. So, uh, I think just seeing it develop pretty much one square at a time, <coughs> although there are reasons to uh, skip around a little bit periodically. And we may be coming up to one of those soon. <coughs> So I've been making a lot of these videos lately, and uh, it seems to be everybody seems to be tuning into them uh, for the e lessons, and so uh, that pleases me to see that we're getting so much uh, feedback and so much response to the videos. Uh, I don't see how much more uh, simple I can make this rather than drawing it out for you like we would do in the regular classroom, what I'm going to call the physical classroom. And uh, then after that, you know, coaching you through the coloring of it, although you will be coloring different colors than what I'm coloring, I suppose, since you'll have a different alphabet. And so I'm just going to, but the production rate, if you're keeping up with this production rate that I'm putting down, you must be doing a pretty good job then, because this is uh, pretty fast work. And uh, I'm just familiar with the project, familiar with the materials. Uh, you know, I've watched a lot of people make these projects over the years, and I've gotten some insight about how to do them just by watching people do them. It's not funny. Okay, I'm about out of tan colored pencil. Oop, there we go. You don't want to scratch your artwork with the wooden part because it, it's difficult to fix that up. Okay, I'm going to need some more tan, so I have to <coughs> sharpen it up. All right, so these projects, they usually take about... Yeah, they usually take about 11 days, to be honest. Um, and uh, we've got about 14 days for each unit to finish, uh, so we finish on time by the end of the school year. Uh, so I'll be posting uh, stuff every day uh, on the Google Classroom, and uh, you simply just got to read the directions, watch the video, and participate just like if you were in the physical classroom with me together. And that's how we would be doing it. So I'm simply trying to mimic what would be happening in the physical classroom. Okay, it always seems like that first letter takes forever, doesn't it? Maybe it's just the perception of it. I don't know that the time is going by just as quickly, but the perception of it 
melting by slowly. But that's just like a kid in a car if you're taking a trip to Florida, I suppose. I always want to know, I mean, you haven't even got the middle town. You know, I've gone 35 minutes and they're like, are we almost there? It's like, we'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> People, the kids are shocked when they hear that for the first time and they're young. So, that's just like your project here. We'll be there tomorrow, maybe the next day. Could take a few days to get there from here. But there will be an end to it. And then we will evaluate it and we will then move on to the next thing, which will be a drawing unit where for the seventh graders we'll make a perspective drawing. Uh, you probably saw one of those in the rules and expectations video. Uh, it looks like we've got a lot of people watch that as well, so if you should have taken your notes down for the rules and expectations. And there will be more videos coming on how to grade artwork, you know, how to prepare your notes has gotten a great deal of views. I think going on a hundred views this morning. Uh, when I checked it out, so uh, that's a good one too. So everybody's responding to it, and that's good. So keep up that good work, even though we're not physically together. We're still making artwork. Hopefully, at the same time that you're watching this video, you can <coughs> channel some uh, physical classroom uh, ideas into it, just like if you were in the regular classroom, maybe find somebody to talk to next to you if you're not disturbing them. Ask them opinions about how it looks periodically. And sometimes the people will be nice to you, other times they'll tell you the truth about it, which can be good, also can be hurtful. So I guess you got to find out who it is you're asking <laughs> before you ask them. Alright, we're making good progress here. It seems like it's going slow to me, but um, I'm going to pick up the pace of my production because uh, I know I can color faster than this. Alright, and I'm looking for all those little blank specks uh, that, you know, always come back to haunt you on an art project. Filling in the little grooves if I see any. See, if you see a little groove from your layout line, you just got to color right into that groove uh, and it will disappear. If you color back and forth across that groove, what will happen is it will just skip over it. Down here where I scratched my drawing with the uh, wooden part of the colored pencil, I'm going to go back and just fill those grooves in there so they're not quite so visible either. Alright. Sometimes you have a dent in your paper and your uh, tiny dent made by uh, all kinds of things, but like writing on top of it. If you had a piece of paper on top of it and you're writing on top of it, many times that will happen and those embossings, as they're called, will show through your work. I guess the best example I got of it is uh, right here in our letter S. You can see these little lines going through. That's because something was on top of this when I drew it and I put dents in there. All right, <coughs> moving on. <coughs> Yellow green on the inside. And then we will move on to the letter R, which might take a little bit longer. It's got those four little squares that we have in this with. So if you're making this lesson up, um, you're going to have, probably have to also check out the video on the lecture if you haven't done that yet and copy those notes down because that will be important for you to be able to succeed on the quiz. And so that's uh, I, I put that stuff out there for you so you can take the notes uh, so that the quiz is easy. Without the notes, the quizzes are ridiculously difficult. I think some uh, had a math quiz calculate that you had a 1 in 200 chance of guessing the right answer uh, on the quiz. So, and the answers are right on the quiz, so you would think that would be easy. But people, there's people who get every question wrong. So take the notes, use the notes. It work better that way. And so this uh, is coloring in quickly, but there's not as much of it to do, I suppose. It's a smaller square. looking pretty good. So it, it does kind of, your skill level just does kind of increase a little bit each day and the ability to, you know, knock out more squares each day gets uh, more well developed. <coughs> it's just familiarity with the project and how you, you know, familiarity with the materials, 
how many times you can twist it at the pencil sharpener before your lead breaks off, you know, that kind of stuff that keeps you working instead of wasting time. So, uh, staying on the project is part of the way that you can uh, avoid the kind of the tedium and the uh, what most kids would call the boredom of producing it. Uh, if you're not easily bored, first of all, then this is not a chore for you. You like it. And when you're making something really attractive, it's even easier to like it. Uh, but it's uh, hard to stay at it, uh, especially if you get distracted a lot by things like sharpening your pencil every 10 seconds. So uh, you just got to learn how to use the materials, roll the pencil in your finger, you know, as you grip it and as you uh, color with it, and you'll find out that it goes a lot farther and you don't have to sharpen it as frequently, which actually keeps you on your project and keeps it more interesting to you than constantly sharpening a pencil. That looks pretty good. I'm moving on. Okay, letter R here. Let's check it out. Okay, orange stripe in the middle, violet on both corners, and magenta. Hmm, that's an interesting color combination. Let's see what we got here. It's starting to look pretty good. Uh, so, but time is slipping, slipping into the future. All right, we're just going to leave this over here and check out our letter R so I can see it. We're going to definitely need that orange pencil sharpened up. We've got plenty of it. And then some violet and magenta. That's going to be interesting to see. Violet and magenta. Okay, I'll go with the orange first. It's actually showing up as better as orange now. I've reset some of the, the settings on the camera and the projector in order to get a better look at what we're doing here. Oh, nice. So sometimes these letters can take longer. Some letters take longer than others. And this letter R in previous projects seems to be that way. It's, I think, just the tight coloring, especially if it's in a row where it's already up against another color. That's a bit of a problem there. All right, there we go. But the more you color with it, the better you get with the materials. So I know, oh, i got to erase that uh, letter R there because it is... Okay, I like to dust it off with a brush instead of trying to blow the scraps off. You usually spit all over it when you do that. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's move on here to this one. Alright. So a lot of times you can just actually hear the colored pencils. I like to listen to music a lot, but I also uh, like to simply uh, listen to the materials uh, interacting with each other. Sometimes when you're, there will be very periodically in a physical classroom, once in a while, everybody will be doing something where everybody in the class is concentrating. And there is no noise except the noise of the pencils coloring and, or uh, Sometimes in painting classes that I take, it's so quiet in those classes that you can actually hear the paint brushes scraping across the surface of the canvases. It's really quite something. And so when you've got a whole room full of students and they're all actually working on something at the same time, it's almost like a magic spell. And uh, so uh, because, you know, art is an inherently communicative uh, type of activity, and since we take group lessons, where a lot of people are prone to communicate with each other, which is fine, as long as they're getting their work done, and uh, they are not distracting the work of others. I guess that's the biggest problem, is that, you know, people just start talking to their neighbor because they're bored, and then their neighbor or their classmate gets distracted, and the next thing you know, nobody's getting any work done in that whole corner of the room. And so, uh, the E lesson here, although it is, sounds strange, it does have some advantages. It's 
doesn't have disruptions and you know you, there doesn't have to be you know constantly chastising a student to get back to work uh, if they're and especially if they're disrupting the work of their neighbors and so uh, I think this might this whole kind of learning has a uh, very old school but it may have some advantages and uh, those advantages are that you know you can work at your own pace pretty much you can go back and view the video over and over and over again uh, until you can get the information you need from it uh, you can slow it down pause it you know and work work along until you catch up and then let the video continue to roll now I also think uh, you may have to monkey with some of the settings on your computer display on your monitor to be able to see a lot of this accurately uh, sometimes you need to turn up the brightness of the monitor or change the contrast of it and maybe the sharpness too so uh, when you're looking at a pro at something like this there's a lot of visual information going into the camera and uh, it will get filtered uh, and it will need to be you know if you want to see all of the detail in it you should probably work on the display settings and then save those settings uh, for when you want to uh, for art class. Now, uh, you may have to actually change those settings back, though, if you have somebody in the uh, household that's also using that computer monitor. Uh, they may not appreciate the the brightness or the, or the extreme um, clarity of the, the sharpness of the way you have the screen set. So you really do need to you know, see if that's going to really cause any trouble in your household there. But if it, you're using your Chromebook, I believe you can change the settings on the display, brighten them or darken them, uh, change the color in the background of your um, screen uh, that's behind the information that you may be looking at. Alright, so we got that part done. <coughs> now we're going to go with, I think, the magenta since it's up here and that'll keep me from uh, dragging my hand through it. So i got to get some... Uh, Magenta sharpened up here, and I still, after all these days, and I'm pretty proud of this, have not yet broken off the tip of my pencil. So I'm feeling pretty, uh, pretty confident. So okay, magenta and magenta. So we'll cover this up so we don't smudge it. Maybe kind of this high risk right here when you get right up next to these lines because you can snag that previous color, especially if it's a darker color like violet or black and it will smear it into the next color and so you just got to be super careful sometimes people will use their slip sheet to cover up what they do not want to uh, slop the color into it gives them more control um, in uh, drafting which is making complicated drawings there's a thing called an eraser shield that we also use and that's for uh, covering up certain parts of lines and it's got strange shaped holes in it so you can erase little parts of things without erasing the entire drawing. So, oh, the magenta is, uh, oh, we got this, where is this? Okay, here we go, magenta and magenta. So we're going to keep it that. <coughs> we got to keep this thing going here. Time slips away from you really quickly. When your mind is occupied it can go quickly or it seems to it's going by at the same rate for everybody but the occupied mind time passes more quickly and so when your mind is occupied my mind is occupied it seems like there's never enough time to get these things done and uh, a typical class period you get about 35 or 36 minutes in a class period of, of good production time that's if there's a 43 minute class period now, uh, if you uh, are currently in a class that's got a longer class period in it, then, yeah, you should get much more production time out of that. If we were to, for instance, have a 53-minute period, uh, I would expect to get about 47 or 48 minutes of uh, production time out of that. So that means we'd be able to get about 12 or 13 more minutes of legit production time out of a 50 out of a 53 minute class so these are just things to consider when you're you know creating a project how much time do you really have to to uh, do this and the answer is about 36 minutes each day uh, 
in order to get the stuff out, you know, start working, and then put it away all before the end of the class period. So that's why it's so important to really get your stuff out and get started immediately, especially when you're doing this portion of the work where you're simply just coloring it in, but that's the longest part of it. So if it were a trip to Florida, this would be the part where you're driving through Georgia, and it seems like you never, ever, ever, ever get there. Georgia takes forever, <coughs> it seems like. Alright, but now I'm picking up the pace. I'm starting to make progress quicker. I don't know why, but I'd like to get two or three more characters or letters done here today. Uh, the next one is easy to do, but it takes a while because it's just a lot of coloring. That letter E is a lot of acreage to fill in. Okay, I'm going to get back to my random scribbling approach here. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. It looks a lot better on the project than it looks over here on the worksheet, that's for sure. Alright, so we'll <coughs> when we get done with this today, of course, we'll just continue on tomorrow the same way. And uh, that's how we would be doing it in the regular physical classroom if we were together in a physical classroom. Except I'd be there to tell you to get back to work. Right now you have to work on your own. Alright. And because I roll that pencil around <coughs> in my hand all the time, I've got a little bit of just a little bit of colored pencil left there. So I'm tuck those things down in the corner. And address all the little parts that are skipped over so there's no white specks of paper showing, so I've got good opacity. That looks pretty good, so I'm gonna put the magenta down and go to the violet, <coughs> which of course looks like it could use some sharpening. And uh, between sharpening the pencils and doing the coloring, it keeps you pretty busy. Okay, so this is, uh, it looks like it's uh, violet and violet in that area, so I think I can go ahead and move this off to the side so I can see the project again. <coughs> I'm going to cover this up and be busy. Mm, this violet also, you know, but violet is made out of a combination of red and blue, but this violet looks very, very bluish if you ask me. Uh, but when we compare it to true royal blue, uh, it would be noticeably different. But it does have a lot of blue content in it. So it's violet purple is what they call it. Most people just call it purple, but violet's a specific wavelength of light. And purple is, you know, it can be almost any color. Magenta is a type of purple. Uh, so, but violet is like a great jelly purple. It's a specific color. So I like the fact that they use that on the color pencil a lot of times. The, the legit name of it, not something that no one understands what it is. And that's one of the problems with uh, other brands of colored pencils besides the Crayolas, is that they use strange names for their colors, like peanut butter and taffy. And nobody knows what bubble gum. Nobody knows what those colors are. <laughs> so you can be pretty sure that when you pick up a Crayola pencil and it says violet purple, that that's the color it's going to be. Same with when it says red. That's like red right out of the color wheel. And the blue. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm not really sure what grape jelly or peanut butter and jelly or what those colors are. Uh, so you would have to do a, if you have those types of colored pencils, then you simply need to use your uh, work the, the, the colors that we were working on. Let me get that. When you do this, just use those colors and try to make them similar, and that way you can separate them out and put them in a cup right next to your work area, and uh, you can get a lot of. You can still make the same colors. You just have to know what they're trying to call them in the other brand of colored pencils. That's why I like <coughs> Crayola. It seems to be has more technically correct colors. 
All right, at least the name's on. This looks pretty good. Got to tuck that violet up in that corner, right up next to that other violet that's up in there. All right. Yeah. Now violet does show uh, a lot of little skip overs if you don't go back and address them. These darker colors uh, have to really fully cover the white paper in order to look good. All right, I'm going to do the same thing down here in this other corner. Keep it coming. So, rolling that pencil in your fingertips, trying to scribble back and forth, and you know, get all the little white specks that show up addressed as you go. I think that's the best way to do this. And sometimes I catch myself not practicing what I preach, though. And so that can humble you. <laughs> but this one's starting to, the pace of production, I think, is starting to pick up a little bit. I'm hoping I can get two more done for the end of this particular session. I have to go to overtime. I think yesterday was the most, so if we can make three, at least we're not slowing down from where we're at yesterday, but it's going to take a while to get through this project at three a day. Twenty-four is going to take eight days of coloring at that rate, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to discipline myself and just start coloring. Okay, looking for a little white specks, addressing opacity issues. That was pretty good. I'm leaving that alone. I'm moving on. Okay, letter E. Let's look at our worksheet. What we made. It's violet on top, orange on the bottom. Isn't that funny? Right now we're working with the violet. So, stay with it. Huh? I don't. I may have just broke my lead. Nope. Still there. <clears throat> so I've gone all this way. Haven't broke any lead yet. Okay, violet on top, orange on the bottom. Let's keep at it with the violet. Oh, we've got to erase the letter so we don't see it through our coloring. Although it would be kind of difficult to see it through this coloring because this is violet and that's probably the darkest color in the batch there. Maybe that dark brown is darker. Alright. You know, of course black, but that's not a color I want you all really using. Sixth graders need to keep that for their colors because they have a very restricted color selection. Alright. So, if you want to make comments, you can either put them onto our Google Classroom. If you've got questions about stuff, I guess I'd ask you to post those on the Google Classroom. And uh, if I can answer those questions, I'll answer them and reply back. Sometimes you'll ask me questions I don't know the answers to. Uh, like, when will all this be over? I don't know. It's like saying, how long is a piece of string? Well, it's as long as it is, right? And that's kind of where we're at, at least with e-lessons right now. Uh, so, we'll just keep working together, posting videos every day, interacting, you know, with message and an email and uh, e-learning I suppose is going to be the way it will be but that's not such a bad thing uh, I believe personally that uh, there's some value to this uh, and I think uh, a lot of it is just showing how important it is for people actually to get together for a class instead of just watch videos of it and try to reproduce what they see I, I've tried to work the videos before, and uh, it's not as easy as it seems. It's uh, the person that's making the video knows what they're attempting to do. The person that's watching the video doesn't necessarily know that. And uh, so, you know, the person making the video is also the person that is uh, a lot of times enthusiastic about it. The person who's watching the video many times is not. Well, that dinger 
I actually said that you know that's the end of this session, but I've got to finish at least this one up so we don't fall far behind here. These uh, letters seem to be rather complex. I mean, it's taken about 10 minutes per letter there to to do each one of these. So I'm a little surprised at the pace of progress, but we'll just keep doing what we're doing. And if you're keeping up with me, I guess you're coming pretty fast. And if you're out performing the way I'm doing this, well then you need to take a rest after that. You've earned it. Well, the rest of us catch up to you. Uh, I'll be trying to post videos each day of our projects and, uh, you, you know, their instructions for the day and uh, what you're supposed to be doing uh, and what uh, I want you to watch. And we'll just keep working that way until we get back together in a physical classroom. Now, if you're making up a project, this is your makeup project, well then, you've got to work on your own and try to integrate yourself into the classroom and multitask at the same time, which is almost impossible to do, I've noticed, especially for middle schoolers. They need to focus on one thing at a time. But uh, that's how you'll be able to make up notes, is by watching these videos. If you missed a day of notes, I'll just give you the the URL link and you can uh, click on it and you will be able to see those notes and make them up. <laughs> that lecture that is. Okay, now, I'm done with this purple, but I'm committed to the fact that I'm going to finish this square before the end of this video here. So, I'm going to keep at it. Sometimes I have to just keep at it. That looks pretty good. I'm not real crazy about all those marks that are showing up right in there, so I have to go back and try to break those down if I can without scratching my artwork. Alright, now we need an orange, and it looks like I've got to sharpen that orange up a bit. And uh, that'll probably be it for today, but um, I'm pretty impressed with the, uh, I think the camera is actually a little bit more clear than it used to be. Uh, and so this bottom of our letter E is still orange. I'm going to move the worksheet off to the side there and finish up here for the, today. And hopefully I can make it happen pretty quick. So I hope you're enjoying the lesson. I hope you're enjoying the project. I <coughs> wish we were all together in a physical classroom though. And I've gotten a lot of comments on the Google Classroom about that and also emails as well. Um, so, you know, sometimes uh, there's just things that have to be the way that they are, unfortunately. And I think this is one of those times. And I've taught art for 25 years and uh, this is the first time anything like this has ever happened in my teaching career. And we've been closed down many times. Uh, but for, you know, things like blizzards, uh, I don't even think we've ever been closed for something like a, an epidemic ever. Uh, so, that's why we're here together virtually if we can't be together physically. Uh, I wonder, you know, sometimes I wonder what my room looks like still. I'm starting to forget the place. And I think everybody likes a few days off, but it gets ridiculous when you're not able to get out and so making art's good therapy and it'll keep your mind occupied when you're trying to cope with social distancing I guess that's going to be the, the t phrase of the year I suppose 2020 at least for right now some people have recommended social distancing on, on social media but now I think it's strangely probably more necessary than ever to to interact with people on social media. It's about the only way people can communicate right now. Alright. Well, uh, now the bottom of this, see, came together faster than the top portion. I wonder why that happens. Probably because the, the violet is so dark. It shows all the white specks through really easy. The brighter colors don't quite do that same way. Alright, well, this took a few more minutes to do, but it was well worth it. I think tomorrow we might actually get into the next row with any luck whatsoever. 
in the next session, that is. We've well, got some complicated letters to do, though, so maybe in the next session we'll skip to the E first and get the big acreage ones done, and then move on to the more complex ones. I'm thinking the letter N, last time we did it up here, it took a while to get through it, so I don't know what your color combinations are on your worksheet, but the one I went with seems to take a long time to color in. There we go. I think I'm going to use this poor orange colored pencil down to the nub here. Here we go. Okay, dress all your little specks of white paper, the skip overs that you can't actually figure out how they keep showing up because you're coloring so hard, but they're there anyhow. And uh, once you get those dressed up, I think that's going to be it for the day here. So we're just going to put this away. And we'll be back at it in the very next session, however long that is, until we get to that. All right, that looks pretty good. Good work. I'll see you next time.